Hi, this is Stan Lyle with Master Math. During the lesson, you're going to come to some You Try It slides where you're asked to do problems that relate to the lesson. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. I hope you have a really good time today. In today's lesson, we're going to study graffiti. We're going to study this formula that's graffitified up on the screen. X equals minus B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. That's known as the quadratic formula. And before this lesson's over, you're going to understand the quadratic formula and how to use it. And you're also going to understand what a discriminant is and how to use that. If you've been watching all these lessons sequentially, then you know that we found a number of different ways to solve quadratic equations. We've solved them by factoring the quadratic. We've solved them by graphing the quadratic. We solve them by finding the square root, and we solve them by completing the square. Well, today we're going to learn a new method. We're going to solve quadratic equations using the quadratic formula. You can always use the quadratic formula to solve any quadratic equation. And the quadratic formula refers to the standard generic uh, quadratic equation, ax squared plus bx plus c. It uses that a, that b, and that c, and puts them together this way. x, or our solutions, equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now that's a mouthful. You may want to memorize it. It's frequently given to you though. And let's look at how it can be useful. Let's say we had the expression or the equation x squared plus 3x equals minus 1. Well the first thing I'd want to do is put that in standard form. x squared plus 3x plus 1 equals 0. Now, when I look at this, it doesn't look to me like I can factor that at all. And I could probably complete the squares, and I could graph it. But let's solve this using the quadratic formula. I've got an A value of 1, I've got a B value of plus 3, and I've got a C value of plus 1. I'm going to plug those values into the quadratic formula. And I'll get x equals minus 3 plus or minus the square root of 3 squared minus 4 times 1 times 1, all divided by 2 times 1. And when I simplify that, I get minus 3 plus or minus 9 minus 4 over 2. I'll simplify again, and I'll get minus 3 plus or minus the square root of 5 over 2. Well now I'll take the square root of 5, but that's not a perfect square. I'm going to have to estimate it. So I'm going to use some squiggly equal signs and, and say that x nearly almost equals minus 3 plus or minus 2.24 over 2. And that equals minus 5.24 over 2. And it also equals minus 0.76 over 2. When I simplify those two expressions, I get minus 2.62 and minus 0.38. You try this one. And remember, I've left you a hint right up here in the right-hand corner. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit your forward key to move on to the solution.
All right, we're asked to find the solutions to the equation. 9 equals 7x squared minus 2x. Well, that's not in standard form. I need to adjust that equation to put it in standard form. And I'll do that here and rewrite the equation. 0 equals 7x squared minus 2x minus 9. 7 is my a value. Minus 2 is my b value. And minus 9 is my c value. Now I just plug it into the equation, which I very generously left for you right up here in the uh, upper right-hand corner of the screen. And I get x equals minus minus 2 plus or minus the square root of minus 2 squared minus 4 times 7 times minus 9 over 2 times 7. Now you're going to notice there's a whole bunch of negatives here. And it, 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 if you make a mistake, it's frequently because you don't deal with the negatives properly or you get careless. This is negative, negative 2. So that's going to be positive 2. And this is negative 9 times positive 7 times negative 4. I got two negatives there. My answer is going to be positive. And I'm squaring a negative number, so my answer is going to be positive there. And when I simplify, I get x equals 2 plus or minus 4 plus 256 all over 14. I can simplify that to 2 plus or minus the square root of 260 over 14. Or 2 plus or minus 16.12 over 14. And that equals 18.12 over 14, in which case x equals 1.29. And it also equals minus 14.12 over 14, in which case x equals minus 1.01. Here's a real life example you can try. Hit your pause button, try this problem, and then hit your forward key to move on to my solution. Somebody figured out that you could model the flight of a shot put, which is a parabola. You could model it with this equation. Y equals negative point zero two four x squared plus x plus 5.5, where x equals the distance that the shot put traveled, and y equals the height of the shot put, both in feet. Now when y equals 0, or the height is 0, then the shot put has been completed, it's back on the ground. And we could use that information to figure out x, the length of the shot put throw. So. We've got an equation, 0 equals negative 0.024x squared plus x plus 5.5. And I can't factor that, so I'm going to use the quadratic formula to try to solve for x. x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. When I substitute this equation's a, b, and c, I get minus 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 squared minus 4 times minus 0 0.024 times 5.5 all over 2 times negative 0 0.024. Now again, you got to be careful with your pluses and your minuses and deal with them appropriately. But if you do, this simplifies to minus 1 plus or minus 1.24 over minus 0 0.048. And that simplifies to 46.6 feet or minus 4.9 feet. Well, I'm pretty sure that that 46.6 feet is the distance this shot put would travel when it finally hit the ground off there to the right of the chart. And I'm pretty sure that that, that that minus 4.9 feet is not the answer I want. But guess what? That minus 4.9 feet would be the position of the uh, shot put uh, at the far left-hand side of the curve. 
All right, we know the quadratic formula. Now we're going to learn about the discriminant. And the discriminant is a part of the quadratic formula. It's this portion in here inside the square root sign. We call that the discriminant. And the discriminant tells us something about the quadratic for, uh, equation. For instance, if the discriminant's value is greater than zero, then the quadratic equation has two solutions. If the discriminant equals zero, then the quadratic equation has one solution. And if the discriminant is less than zero, there are no solutions. Here's an example. We've got 3x squared minus 6x plus 4 equals 0. Well, if I calculate my discriminant, b squared minus 4ac, I get 36 minus 48 or minus 12. My discriminant equals a negative number. So there are no solutions to this problem. And if I graphed it, you'd see that the graph doesn't touch the x-axis. There are no solutions to this equation. Now you try this one. Hit the pause button, do the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. Well, if you remember the equation for the discriminant, it's pretty easy to solve problems like this, where you a you're asked to determine how many times the graph of this equation crosses the x-axis. That assumes, of course, that you understand that the number of times it crosses the x-axis is also the number of solutions. So let's use our discriminant, b squared minus 4ac. It's just this portion of the quadratic formula inside the square root sign. Now let's substitute the b value and the a value and the c value from our equation, 2x squared plus 3x minus 5, and we get 3 squared minus 4 times 2 times minus 5. Be careful with your negative signs and you'll get 9 plus 40 or 49. That's a positive value. So we must have two solutions. And if we graph it, we'll see that the parabola crosses the x-axis two times. Well, that's our lesson on discriminants and the quadratic formula. I hope you learned a lot. Now it's time to test your skills. Go to www.mastermath.info and you'll find some worksheets and quizzes on this subject. Well, I hope you had a good time. I hope we see you again real soon.